Coming up on today's message with Pastor Johnny. And so he's speaking harsh to them in the previous verse, talking about death was at work with them, but life is in work with Christ. And Paul has gotten out of the rhetorical, metaphorical language when he's there talking to them, and he got real plain. He got real plain because sometimes you got to get real plain when you need to protect your brand. Sometimes to protect your brand, you can't beat around the bush. You have to tell some folks no. Sometimes to protect your brand, you have to disassociate yourself with certain people that are bringing you down. Is the microphone still working? Sometimes to protect your brand, you're going to have to let him or her go. God, we thank you for this time. I ask that every word that I speak and every thought that I think be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. Hide me behind your cross. Allow me to continue to decrease so that you can increase. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. brief moments that I'm going to be in front of you, I want to talk a little bit about an eternal brand. An eternal brand. Uh, I kind of find it funny, a lot of things that I I, I do for entertainment these days, uh, everybody's been talking about uh, one of two things, uh, securing the bag and protecting the brand. Every TV show, uh, uh, song I listen to, podcast, uh, well, stuff that is of of a more urban styling, that's what they talk about, uh, securing the bag and and protecting the brand. Uh, One of the popular songs out by theologian uh, Gucci Mane and and, uh, his guest professors uh, Migos Uh, They say you get the bag and fumble it. I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. That's just urban English vernacular for I get something and I'm going to make more out of what's been given to me. You, on the other hand, are not. Yes, your pastor just referenced a song from Gucci Man and Migos. (laughs) I'll be the first to still say that that ain't good rap, but, you know, I grew up under some other ones, but... It applies to the sermon, and it's all about protecting your brand, your status, your reputation, your name, how you are esteemed among the other people around you. A brand should mean something. When you see a symbol or hear the name, its reputation should immediately come to mind. Uh, Branding has changed. A hundred years ago, a brand referred specifically to a, a mark that you burned on livestock to, uh, to, to let you know which farmer owned that cow. Uh, uh, but now a brand is a name, a term, a design, a symbol that separates a product uh, from another. We don't see a triangle with an X inside of it or a circle with a J anymore as much as we see uh, an apple or a cup of coffee for Starbucks, or a Ford logo, uh, or or some golden arches. Uh, They all are there, and today's brands are for consumers and not cowboys. Uh, I went to search what are some of the most popular brands today, or the most popular perceived brands today, and it was not what I thought it was going to be. Um, It was Google and Amazon, and Tesla, and Netflix, and Airbnb, and Facebook, and Starbucks. Uh, Some would say that's not a surprise, uh, because those logos, those images, have been burned into our brains over the last few years. But it's not just about it being well known. It's about the company's reputation. 
because you can see a logo all over the place, but the company have a horrible reputation. Uh, Exxon Mobil has a very recognizable logo, but it wasn't included as one of the top brands. Uh, the top brands that the people considered when they took this survey had to, like Google and Amazon and stuff, have the power to connect deeply within people and bring about change, said one of the people that took the survey. They can influence the direction of a larger culture and make an impact on the way other in businesses think and operate. I saw that firsthand watching how Starbucks operated when that man, or those gentlemen rather, got arrested because they hadn't bought anything yet. Whereas many a company I would have thought would have said, well, it's all right to refuse service. It's all right to boot people out. No, no, no. The CEO met with them, shut all the stores down for racial sensitivity training, and donated money to STEM programs on their behalf. Amen. Amen. They did that because they wanted to protect their brand. Amen. Brands that matter and connect deeply with people bring about change. They actually influence the direction of the culture. For example, it is fun Amazon has fundamentally shifted the way we buy stuff. I remember talking to my daughter when she caught a, a bit of the news and saw that Toys R Us was going out of business. <laughs> bad day, bad day. <laughs> Daddy, where are we going to get the toys from? <laughs> now, when I was a child, oh, Toys R Us going out of business would have been a big deal. Yeah. That would have I would have thought something was wrong. <laughs> but you got stores like Amazon out yeah. there and Walmart getting into the, the online shopping and 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 uh, you know I. I, I, I I have a honeydew list from time to time for my wife. And one I've come to particularly enjoy is getting groceries. Why do I enjoy getting groceries? Because groceries goes like, used to go like when I was doing grocery shopping for mama, I got a list. And my sister and I would split up the list and go all over the store, walking around, picking up all the stuff, put it in, and that watermelon better be sweet and it better be right, and all of this stuff better be. We don't shop like that anymore. Here's how we shop. My wife pulls out her phone, does a little bit of punching, says, I just bought groceries. And in an hour or two, I go drive into the parking lot, park in a spot, Tell her what parking spot I'm in. It's B957 or A567. And she says, okay. She sends a text message to that same place she sent the order. And they bring all the groceries out to the car and put them in my car. Oh. Oh, oh, felt it, felt it. But they've changed the way they do business. Other companies have changed the way they do business. Because Amazon has forced them to change the way they do business. Why would I go in the store and put up with attitude or you not having what's on sale or the, uh, all of the stuff being gone when I can just with a few mouse clicks have it delivered to my house? Amazon has changed the way we do business. Matter of fact, for Teacher Appreciation Week, some of our teachers for at my ch children's school got Amazon gift cards. And, and some of them were extremely appreciative of that because they do most of their shopping through Amazon. But Amazon's brand has changed things. It's fundamentally changed the way we buy stuff. Apple, one of the world's most valuable companies and, and, and all of that due to its gorgeous products and intuitive services and people will buy things from Apple even if you get into the technical portion of it there are actually better cheaper computers out there than Apple but people want the Apple because of the brand my wife's grandfather or my wife's grandfather he he talks about how he hates when people he's a mechanic 
and he hates when people buy a certain kind of car. Uh, I ain't going to call this name out because I'm pretty sure it's a couple of them in the parking lot. I'm going to just say people buy these certain kinds of cars for the status symbol of the brand, but when it comes to actually trying to fix them, they cause more trouble than it's worth. But the brand, the perception of the brand makes them want to buy it. Facebook has a brand. Uh, it knows that humans crave connection, and Facebook is where it happens, for better or for worse. Uh, under this current administration, some people have gotten a little keyboard tough. And I say to them, I pray that uh, your, your, your president don't get you beat. He got secret service. You don't. But they crave that connection, that interaction. And, 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 and because of that, there are things that exert the brand exerts influence over the world. What about our Christian brand? Amen. Uh, the cross is recognizable on church buildings. Okay. And then depending on what the cross looks like, you can tell what kind of church it is. Because if it's a cross with the flame running on the side of it, we know that's a Methodist church. If it's a cross and, and uh, there's, it's, the, it's inside a cup kind of leaning down, we know it's a Disciples of Christ church. If it's a cross and it still has our Savior on it, we know it's a, a, a Catholic church. We know based on these brands what it is. And, and some people even get cross tattoos. We got cross lapel pins and, and cross jewelry and the Christian symbol burned into our skin. Uh, but that brand is not always favorable because people have done some very horrible things in the name of the Christian brand. Uh, these things have happened and according uh, uh, to the, Christi the Center for American Progress, Christianity to some has been associated with intolerance, bigotry, anti-intellectualism, exclusion, rigidity, stinginess, lack of compassion. Not the brand we are looking to send. Uh, the, the passage I covered last week was talking about treasures in a jar of clay, and I started at the beginning of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and was talking about the fact of about what's on the inside is more valuable than what's on the outside. And because what's on the inside is more valuable than what's on the outside, we ought to be making our decisions based on what's on the inside and not the outside. And bring it on down. We shouldn't be making decisions about who we associate with in this thing called faith and in this thing called Christianity based on how much money somebody has or based on how much education somebody has or whether or not they dress the way that we think they should dress because it's what's on the inside that matters and so I covered that last week and I figured well why don't I just go ahead I stop at verse 12 in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 and so now I pick it right up on verse 13 Paul is speaking harshly to these people this church has gotten together in Corinth and they have gotten some problems you have some church members that think they are better than one another and so he is speaking really harsh to them, and that's why he said that death is working in us, but life in you. They had to understand that this Christianity thing was not set up for you to outrank somebody else. Amen. This Christianity thing was set up for you to love one another and help one another and meet each other at the point of your needs and operate in community. Amen. And so he's speaking harsh to them in the previous verse talking about death was at work with them but life is in work with Christ and Paul has gotten out of the rhetorical metaphorical language when he's there talking to them and he got real plain he got real plain because sometimes you got to get real plain when you need to protect your brand yes. sometimes to protect your brand you can't beat around the bush you have to tell some folks no Sometimes to protect your brand, you have to disassociate yourself with certain people that are bringing you down. Is the microphone still working? Sometimes to protect your brand, you're going to have to let 
him or her go. And Paul is quoting Psalm 116 and 10 when he says that he believed and therefore he spoke. His confidence is grounded in the faith of God and he is confident that God will do what God said God was going to do because God has a track record. This is the same God when you go back to look at the brand, you understand that he was there when the world was formed. He spoke and worlds were formed. He spoke and light got separated from darkness. He spoke and animals and vegetation and everything started happening. He breathed life into man. So this is the same God that he's going back to for help for his problem. So he understood that he had a track record and past performance that had never failed him yet. And because he had that past performance, he was able to reach out and ask for what he needed. The same God that raised Jesus from the dead is the same God that has the power that has been put into work with each and every one of you. And all this is for your sake. Ah. In verse 15, he said, for all things are for your sakes and let them know that this present suffering is made to lead for an ensuring of future glory. I had an an epiphany, if you will, uh, a few months back uh, about some of the things I had been going through in my past. Uh, Those who may not know, we're sitting on uh, chairs instead of pews right now, and we got a different kind of floor down. We took a little bit of water. I think somebody spilled a glass somewhere uh, in in August, just a a little bit of water. And and I thank you... uh, brothers and sisters of District 15B, because some of you were here to help with the cleanup effort. But I had an epiphany during this situation. Uh, Many of you know or may not know, we didn't have flood insurance on the building. So we had to to, uh, pay out of pocket and raise grants, and and, and there was the generosity of, of some of these other churches uh, before I became a pastor, I was a sound engineer, and and I'd worked at several churches, editing video, uh, doing sound for their events, coming up on some things, and my wife had worked at several churches. It was suffering. It was hard. You around people, and, and, and we have an event every year, and somebody got to go to the hospital for exhaustion. You're dealing with all kind of different personalities. You're dealing with people. You spend hours and hours working on something, and somebody point at it and be like, you missed a spot right there. Do the whole thing over again. That is the life of audio and video production, unfortunately, in some places. But there was some suffering. But some of these same places where we had spent years suffering at were some of the first churches to cut a check. To make sure that this church got repaired. So I thought about it. All those things that we had went through. With all these various other organizations. And churches and businesses. All of these things that had happened. Came to this point. At that time. It was a present suffering. But it came to be a future glory. Uh, And so we know that we don't lose heart. In those kind of things. I don't lose heart. And what I go through right now, because I understand that what I'm going through is temporary. The present suffering is going to lead to a future glory. And I need not lose heart because the outward man might be losing day by day, but the inward man is consistently growing. Ah, The present suffering is only for a moment, but his eternal, uh, but the God's gift of grace is for eternity. And not only that, outward appearances are misleading. I went to a black and white gala last night with my wife. And uh, the MC for the evening was uh, a comedian. And it was a scholarship gala. And so they had all the family members 
of the people sitting on, they put out chairs in front of the stage so that all the family members could come down and sit on the front row as their baby walked across the stage and got a big cardboard check for the scholarship that they were getting. And some people were getting a uh, $1,000 for a year. Some people were getting 1500 every year for four years. And so there were all kind of scholarships being passed out, about 10, 15 kids on stage. And of course, they showed us that because they were then going to ask us to donate so that next year scholarship could happen. And, and, and uh, the, the, one of the chairs of the event said, oh, man, y'all look real nice right now to the parents. And he said, y'all need to, to, uh, y'all need to look a little downtrodden so we can get some more money. <laughs> and, and, and at that time, the comedian hopped up on the microphone and said, they looking like that, but they all fronting. We in nice tuxes and, and formal link gown dresses, but somebody's lights is on, uh, somebody's lights is off, rather, at home. Fronting, outward appearances, able to put a smile on our face and act like nothing is wrong when we ought to be able to stop fronting. The outward appearances are misleading. Now, I'm not saying you walk around uh, with, 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 a, with a frown on your face and woe is me, but sometimes when you need help, it would behoove you to ask somebody. Yeah. 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 Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Call on the Lord while he is near. Seek him, and he shall be found. The outward appearances are misleading. Yeah. It's what's on inside that lasts long. Don't be concerned about the tent. A tent is temporary. A tent is just to get you up out the elements for a little bit. Focus on the house that is not made with human hands. Paul is writing to the, uh, the, the, the church at Corinth. We know that the earthly tent that we live in is destroyed. But we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. It's a focus on eternal life made possible by the resurrection of Jesus. And that is the heart of the Christian faith. It assures us that nothing in all creation, not even death, can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus our Lord. From the love of God, rather, in Christ Jesus. And we need this assurance, especially with the pace of change of the world today. Institutions and corporations no longer provide our communities with the stability that they once did. Yeah. Uh, Bethlehem Steel, anybody? Uh, yeah. Circuit City? Uh, yeah. Pan Am? Uh -huh. Tower Records? Woolworths? Those were yeah. rememberable brands. They have come and gone. We ought to focus on the things that last. All those things that started disappearing since 1989, and they were once brands that mattered. But now they are gone based on economic change. And just like the brands we name now that have last, they'll pass away too. But we need to understand and focus on the brand that is eternal. The brand that will not fade. The brand that includes God's promise of a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. A brand that connects deeply with the people who want to live in faith and love. The brand that knows that the choices we are going to have to make in this current life have eternal consequences. The brand that is able to transform the world as it should be and shape the history of things. This is a brand that can affect the culture. This is a brand that is God's vision of heavenly kingdom in which injustice and war are replaced by the righteousness and the grace and the peace. This is a brand that will not fail. Kings and kingdoms, they will all fade away. But there is something about that name. There is a brand that is being protected. There is a brand that was in the beginning when the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It was a brand that caused that word to become flesh and dwell among us. It was that brand that was being protected when it went through 42 generations. It was that brand that he was protecting when he opened up the eyes of the blind and set the captives free and declared the acceptable year of the Lord. It was that brand that allowed him to live of a life that I couldn't live. It was that brand that allowed him to die a death that I could not die. It was that brand that made the name above all names protected Jesus Christ. It was a brand that took it all the way to Calvary. It was a brand that hung him on that cross. But 
between two thieves. It was a brand that caused him to die. He was protecting that brand and letting us know that it would last eternal. It was a brand that put him in a borrowed tomb because he wasn't going to be there long. And it was because of this brand that we have faith in early on the third day. He got up with all power in his hands. It's because of that brand that he is coming back again. It's because of that brand that we ought to live this life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church open, and we invite you to come. That brand, that brand, it's a brand. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and be safe. It's a brand that provides us access to everlasting life. Protect that brand. The doors of the church are open. Thank you for listening to this message. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you found this message. If this message blessed you, be a blessing to someone else and share it. Connect with Pastor Johnny on Instagram and Twitter, and be sure to like Faith UMC Dickinson on Facebook. 